Coming up, YouTube's Cosmic Panda, NBC's Twitter domination, fancy hands, and more Google Plus add-ons than you can shake a circle at. All that and shh on the social hour. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the Social Hour is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is the Social Hour with Sarah Lane and Amber MacArthur. Episode 16, recorded Monday, July 11th, 2011. This episode of The Social Hour is brought to you by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off your new account for six months, go to Squarespace.com and use the offer code SOCIALHOUR7. And by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your Mac, your PC, your iPad, your iPhone, or TV instantly. All streamed directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to Netflix.com slash twit. Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of The Social Hours, episode 16 and from Petaluma, California. I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm Amber MacArthur from Prince Edward Island, Canada. How's it going over there in Prince Edward Island, Amber? It's going well, Sarah. I've, uh, I've uh, been enjoying myself a little bit too much. Uh, it's been a great holiday. It's uh, nice to be here in the summertime. The weather is fantastic and spending a lot of time with friends and family. And uh, I haven't been updating my social streams as much as I should be, but... Uh, I'm taking a mini break. You have, a good, you have a good excuse. So Prince Edward Island is pretty far north. Are you experiencing really sh short uh, winters, this, or winters, uh, darkness uh, times this time of year? Is the sunset really late, or are you not as high as I think you are? Yeah, no, probably not as high as you think we are. So the sunset is uh, really around nine-ish, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, we're not too far north, obviously, uh, pretty far east, though. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yes, but uh, it's been great so far. It's been uh, um, like the we I'm surprised the weather has been so nice. Uh, it's usually nice in the summertime, but uh, we've had lots of consecutive days of sunshine and I've been out on the water and at the beach and it's just been wonderful. That sounds great. It's not that warm in the Bay Area right now. We had we had a nice little heat wave uh, a couple weeks ago. And ever since then, well, in Petaluma, it's a little bit different because we're farther north. But mm. in, the, in San Francisco, where I live, I mean, it's like high 50s. And yeah. it's apparently going to be like that all week. Doesn't bother me. But this is when the summer people in Northern California start to complain. Wait a second. I thought it was like 902 and 0. Why did I move here from Kansas again? It's really cold. So, yeah. I, I was one of those people. I remember <laughs> right? July you, was one of the worst months. It. When I lived in San Francisco, it was always cool and kind of foggy. and um, But fortunately, by the fall, it seems to always get nicer again. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, in fact, the fall is kind of the nicest time. All right, so the first order of business we have on our show today is something that I had no idea existed, Amber, and you floated me a VentureBeat article about a new look that, that YouTube is experimenting with. Yeah, so uh, YouTube has launched a, a new look and feel that you can test out for the number one video sharing site in the world. Uh, it allows you to view videos on a larger uh, scale. So um, people are saying it's a little bit like Hulu as far as that video experience. So maybe Google board a few ideas from then. Uh, if you check out uh, the uh, test link that you can try out to see what it's like, you'll see that essentially the video occupies more space on the page. And so instead of it being kind of cluttered when you go to a traditional YouTube video, what you get is almost full screen video and you can increase the screen size from there as well. I think this is kind of a neat thing because I know there are, are great communities on YouTube, but sometimes the comments and other stuff on the page just seems to clutter up the video experience. Yeah, I agree. YouTube, although clearly it's, 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 the, it's, it's sort of the de facto video sharing site on the internet. Everybody knows what YouTube is like. I don't think that anybody would say, oh, it's definitely the best looking one. It's just the one that has the most users, active users. So this is called Cosmic Panda. Um, That's a great name. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, YouTube has what's known as um, kind of like uh, Google has their labs area where they test out all sorts of 
uh, uh, new ideas and see if if uh, if they're worth bringing to the public. YouTube has something similar. It's called Test Tube. If you just go to youtubecom slash tube you get quick links to a lot of projects that they're working on. Many of these I've just never heard of before. Some of them I have. Some of them you probably have too. But Cosmic Panda is right here at the top, so it's an easy way to try it out. So when we're looking at Cosmic Panda, I mean this is YouTube as we know it. You can search for something. I mean if I search for Twit, for example, um, here's the Twit Netcast Network, which is our own channel. But when you click on the channel, you can see, oh, this is there's there's some familiarity, but it's laid out differently. I mean, the um, the playlists, for example, are sort of smaller and have a nice horizontal thing going on. The Tech News Today. Um, playlist, for example, within the Twitch channel. Um, it's an easier way to, to get to shows. It looks nicer. It's a little bit more streamlined. You've got your numbers in the upper right-hand corner, which is a little bit different. Um, and then, yeah, when you click on uh, a partic particular video, let's just go to recent uploads. So, Twit309 Dances with Zuck. Uh, then you get uh, suggested videos as well. Well, wait a second. Now, where are the suggested videos? They should be on the right-hand side. I wonder if I'm just looking at a weird view here. But uh, I think, Amber, what you were talking about before was that uh, in the way that YouTube is as we know it is you get a lot of other similar suggested videos that may or may not have much to do with the video that you're looking at and it's kind of a mess. And I think that Cosmic Panda, whatever that means, although people really love pandas, is a way <laughs> to try to get around that and just make YouTube uh, not only a prettier experience but something that's more easily uh, navigable, navigatable. I think too. I mean, it's not. It's necessary, I think, for a lot of these uh, Web 2.0 sites to redesign and uh, give themselves a bit of a facelift. Because I mentioned this, and we're going to talk more about Google Plus later. But now, when I go back into Facebook, and I've just come from Google Plus, Facebook feels like this dated design in some ways. It just kind of ages it, uh, and it feels a little stodgy. So it's nice to see YouTube actually uh, um, overhaul their uh, user interface, so it just stays kind of current and uh, up to date. I agree. I agree. I, I mean, I, I like this a lot. I think um, I think it's long overdue. I'm sure YouTube knows that. They probably have been talking about a redesign for a long time, but obviously Google's busy. And then the YouTube team is sort of separate from – Google is very fragmented in that way. I know some people who work at the uh, YouTube in the YouTube department, and um, it's not as if they don't realize that YouTube needs to get a facelift every once in a while, but – uh, you know, they have to worry about scalability and original content, and they're working on all sorts of stuff. So this is awesome. Uh, definitely, again, you can try it out. Um, Cosmic Panda, and that's um, in the YouTube tests area. And if you need those links, we've got those links. Um, we'll put them in the show notes when the show's over, too. Another story that you floated my way, Amber, was about... TV shows being social, and I know people go like, oh gosh, we really want to tweet, you know, TV shows being social, what does that mean? Just people hashtagging shows, but there's kind of more to it, isn't there? Yeah, you know, it's really interesting. I think you'll hear this term thrown around all the time, social TV. And I've been meaning to get a couple of women in, in San Francisco on our show to talk about social television because they've just created an app. I, I believe it's for VH1 where they allow people to truly interact while they're watching TV shows. Nothing necessarily new, but I think there's a big push among, among broadcasters realizing that people are spending so much time on their iPads, on their smartphones, and they want to be able to take advantage of that interactivity. So there were some stats that just came out from uh, Trender. Uh, talking about some of the top broadcast networks um, in June. This is when the study was done based on the social activity that went along with the TV shows airing. So NBC is at the top of the list. Uh, so as far as social activity, it's about 47.7% uh, um, of people who are watching or are interacting using different social media platforms. Uh, and then when you get down to the top shows, and this is what I found the most interesting as far as uh, people who were interacting while watching shows a lot, the Voice is the number one show as far as interactivity while the show, in fact, is airing. And then we have Glee, Family Guy, The Simpsons, and Master Chef. Uh, not a big surprise, I think, Sarah, with The Voice because some of these uh, competitions, especially music competitions, I, I just love going on to Twitter and watching conversations because it's more interesting sometimes than the show themselves itself. Absolutely. I think The Voice, now correct me, chat room, if I'm wrong because I don't actually watch the show. I'm a little maxed out on singing competitions these days, although I know it's a very popular show and it's done well for NBC, is that 
Um, well, with American Idol, for example, they've got the 1-800 number where you call in and you vote for the person that you want to win. I think The Voice was allowing people to vote via Twitter as well, maybe with a certain hashtag or, or, or at least jumping from Twitter to, to, a, to a voting page or something like that. So it might have something to do with it. And if that's true, then that's ingenious because talk about getting people to participate. I think, uh, I, and I'm not sure, maybe the BET Awards, I see them at the top of uh, mm -hmm. June Social Activity as well. Also something I didn't watch, which is silly because I love award shows, so I don't know how I missed it. But uh, maybe there, were, there was something as, you know, as far as like audience choice or, or something that they were doing uh, via Twitter. But yeah, it's, it's interesting. I mean, The Simpsons, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe they, maybe they had something going on that we didn't know about. Master Chef, I didn't even heard of that. I, I guess I don't even know that show network show or something. I'm sorry, foodies, don't hate me. I don't watch that much TV anymore because I don't have cable. Um, and then, of course, Comedy Central, which I think I would guess Comedy Central would be, for example, Daily Show clips or, or Stephen Colbert clips. And that Leo was complaining about this the other day is that uh, those shows don't have uh, episodes up in their entirety online. They just have a lot of clips, you know, like this, this mm. particular interview or this funny monologue, that sort of thing. But I think that lends itself really well to... Uh, social TV because those are the easier video clips to share with people because it's like it's just three minutes it's not the whole half hour of a show that you don't have time to watch right now yeah, and I mean, I think if you look at both the shows that they mentioned in the study, both uh, The Daily Show um, and uh, Stephen Colbert's show, uh, both of those hosts also integrate uh, a lot of social media into the conversations and the news items that they talk about on the show. Colbert is famous for, you know, getting people to kind of tweak Wikipedia pages as the show is going live, and he talks a lot about some of trending terms and things that only the online community would be aware of, and so they incorporate a lot of that content into their actual programs, obviously in the online audience that just loves their programming right now. So that's one of the reasons I always watch them. They, I think they have their finger on the pulse uh, as far as understanding the latest trends in social media. So that must help their numbers too. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I you know, this, this kind of stuff is fascinating. It's uh, social TV. You know, I was, I was sitting around uh, last night and I made a joke tweet uh, that I don't think a lot of people understood, but... Um, <laughs> Okay, well, or, or it just wasn't, it wasn't funny, uh, which is fine, but I was, um, I was just hanging out, I was lazy yesterday and, and thought, well, you know, when you, when you tweet certain things, sometimes you unleash the spammers on Twitter because they're, they're doing searches for particular keywords. So yep. for example, I have noticed in the past when I say things like Apple or iPad, uh, you know, free or, you know, Nexus or Android, that sort of thing. I get these weird spam accounts saying, get a new iPad 3 free, click this link. You know, it's like, oh, and I always report those accounts because as a, as a dutiful Twitter user, I think that it's, you know, all of our best interest to do that. So I tweeted, you know, in the mood to kill some Twitter spam tonight on my Apple iPad 2. And first of all, not only did the, it completely backfired because the spammers are at least <laughs> smart enough to realize that I was trying to get them. So no, I got no t spam tweets, but I got a lot of people either saying, oh, you're just a show off. Yeah, we know you have an iPad. Who cares? Or, hey, cool, Sarah's sitting in front of the TV with her iPad. That's what the iPad was designed for, <laughs> which is true. That's exactly what I was doing. But it didn't really have anything to do with being social um, online and, and, and on my computer at the same time. Although that's almost always what's going on. Um, in my house later at night. It's very rare that I'm sitting watching a movie or a TV show or anything without at least my iPad or my laptop or even my phone close by. You know, looking up things in real time. And I mean, that's definitely something that I'm doing. Oh, yeah. I, I get kind of bored now if I don't have something. I mean, I kind of have to go to a movie theater to actually uh, um, pay attention 100% to what's on just one screen. <laughs> so. Yeah. And I'm sure it's only a matter of time before maybe movie theaters become social in some respect. Who knows what will happen there. But As long as people stay quiet. You be as yeah. social as you want, but I don't want to see the, like, the glare of your, of your phone screen in the row ahead of me. I don't want you to talk. I know. I agree with you. It's like, it reminds me, there was a, a movie, uh, not a great movie, but um, a movie that I watched not that long ago, I think on a plane with Ashton Kutcher or something. And it, uh, in it, he, the iPhone ringtone goes off all the time. Uh -huh. And uh, I kept thinking it was people around me on the plane. And it, I was imagining people in a movie theater would feel the same way. There's nothing more annoying than that sound when you're trying to sit down and concentrate on something. It's true. I would say, I would say that's probably the, the one place left on earth 
Well, except on a plane because I can't use my phone. Mm-hmm. But where I, I really do, I don't turn it off. But I mean, I put it on vibrate, I put it in my purse. It's nowhere near me. If someone calls me, I will not know for the duration of the movie because I've paid to be there. And and um, I do see a lot of people. You know, I don't, I don't see so many people answering phones anymore in movie theaters which was like a really crappy trend for a short period of time because now they can just text i think there's just a lot more of that going on but it's still disruptive um yeah i don't i don't know what the solution is because our tools are just getting easier and easier i guess we just have to wear like horse blinders and just yeah. and just make sure that we can't see anything in our peripheral vision and then we'll be or, happier moviegoers or just stay home i guess and watch netflix <laughs> or that or that exactly or, so, or participate in spongebob squarepants on twitter uh, amber oh, yeah. you're a mom and i'm not so i don't know anything about spongebob you have to tell me what's going on with their latest okay. experiment okay sarah i had to include this uh headline because i was thinking of our conversation a few weeks ago when i think it's possible that i did sing the spongebob squarepants song and i asked you where spongebob squarepants lived and you were like i have no idea i don't but know course, yeah he lives in a pineapple under the tree. Hopefully you've learned from that episode. And uh, any parent out there uh, who has toddlers will appreciate SpongeBob SquarePants. And he is exact. He's just a sponge. Um, but uh, Nickelodeon, I don't mean that in a negative way. Sorry. No offense to him. I mean, he actually. No offense to sponges. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, Nickelodeon has uh, come up with this idea where um, they are telling a Twitter story um, that is going to be a SpongeBob SquarePants uh, story uh, exclusively on Twitter. So the story is made for Twitter. It's an adventure that takes place from July 12th to 15th, and uh, it's a Twitter tale. And it will be to promote a new episode of um, SpongeBob SquarePants called Frozen Face Off that's airing Friday, July 15th. So basically, you'll be able to follow along Twitter and uh, get pictures and links and all that fun stuff and uh, follow a story uh, storyline as it uh, proceeds over the course of a few days. So, all right, help me out a little bit here because I understand SpongeBob SquarePants to be a show for kids, maybe for families, but you know, it's a show that kids love and then parents love because the kids love it. Doesn't this seem like kind of an adult activity? I mean, it's, are they expecting kids to be participating via Twitter? I mean, maybe I'm underestimating how well uh, younger kids could can use social services or get the hang of it. Or is this something for more of an adult audience? Uh, so it looks like based on this press release that SpongeBob's fan base is so broad that about a third of its audience is adults. Uh, so basically they wanted to be able to bring this experience to adults who are using Twitter. thought this was kind of interesting. Obviously, like myself, there's lots of parents who end up watching some of these shows and they have their favorites. Like my brother hates Dora the Explorer um, with a passion. You know, pe- people, adults end up kind of latching onto some characters and disliking others. So they want to try to entice that audience that way by um, uh, sharing this tale on Twitter. I don't know if I'm going to be following. I mean, I'm kind of into the cartoons in the sense that I want to know what my son is watching now and again, but uh, uh, I don't know if I'd follow the Twitter tale, but we'll see. Maybe it's really good, Sarah. And it's, a, it's an interesting uh, marketing campaign as far as a, an idea to use social media to kind of tell a story over the course of a few days and push people to watch a new television program. I mean, kind of like social TV in some ways. Yeah, absolutely. Look at, okay, so look at SpongeBob SquarePants, the show's Facebook account. Okay, we all know that kids under 13 aren't supposed to be on Facebook at all. SpongeBob has 25,391,666 people that like the page. Obviously, a very big number of those people are adults. Right. I mean, maybe there's a few kids in there who are liking things that aren't supposed to be on Facebook, but that's certainly a lot of grown ups who enjoy this franchise and who would probably be into trying out some sort of campaign on Twitter. Because if you like a show enough, then these sorts of games that might seem silly to the outsider are actually really fun. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and I think it's one of those things where um, it, they just kind of want to experiment with new ideas. And that's what I love to see is, you know, you get broadcasters out there trying to come up with creative ways to entice new audiences, maybe, and just keep them um, tuned in to great content. So, I, you know what, I might actually follow along and see what is happening, because I do think, I, although there has been there has been stories told before on Twitter, it's, uh, you know, as far as a cartoon like this, I don't think I've heard of that before. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. If, if anyone decides to participate in the SpongeBob Let experiment, please, yes, tell us how it was. Is it exciting? Is it not all it's cracked off to be or anything in between? We want to know. Tell us. Be social. Um, Sarah, we, do, you, do you remember where SpongeBob lives? Well, okay. All right. 
Uh, some people in the chat room are saying a pineapple under the sea, but you said a pineapple under the tree. I thought he lived under a tree. Oh, in the sea. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, chat room more. I, I don't want to say that anybody's wrong here. But I do see a lot of C's in our chat room. Okay, so I trust the chat room. C or tree. I mean, is he, maybe he's just sort of like an amphibian kind of a sponge. So he's he's <laughs> he's on land under trees. He swims. I, I just don't know. I have no idea what SpongeBob say. does with his spare time. Uh, we just threw a lot <laughs> of links at you guys. And if you're wondering, ah, how do I follow along and not have to write down links and figure out everything that you talked about if we went by something too fast, don't worry about it. Within about a day or so of shooting our show live, not only do we post it um, to our website at twit.tv slash TSH, that's where you can get all of our show archives and everything, but on each show, we also have a show notes area which is actually, it's crowdsourced. Um, we try to fill in everything as good as possible within about a day or so. Sometimes you guys email and say, where are your show notes? Um, sometimes we don't get to it uh, until, you know, between 24 and 48 hours, but we do get to it. But it's also something that anybody can add to, at least right now. I, our website's about to change. Um, as I'm sure Leo has told many of you, we're getting a neat uh, refresh on our website, which is also sorely needed, but we still have all of our information there. So if you're ever wondering, where's all your stuff? How do I, how do I watch a show that I missed? Uh, that's where you go, twit.tv slash TSH. And Amber, if people aren't watching live and they want to watch live next time because it's a lot of fun, how do they do that? Uh, they can go to, uh, I always go to HTTP uh, colon slash slash twit, uh, was it twit? Oh my gosh, twit.live.tv, is that right? It's live.twit.tv live or twit.tv twit slash live. It's okay. Perfect. We, we, I mean, we give people options, right? There's lots of good options, so that's, a good, that's the good news. And it's great to have people watching live, but also listening to the show at a later date as well. Absolutely. We don't care. How, well, we we kind of care, but I mean, we don't, there's, we don't have a preference how you want to watch a show as long as you're enjoying it. Or listen, of course. We have video uh, streams, uh, audio streams. We put all of our shows up on YouTube. So if you want to subscribe to our YouTube uh, playlist, that's fine too. As long as you're enjoying it and giving us feedback, we are happy. And a quick reminder that we do... Record the show regularly uh, Mondays, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Sometimes that changes depending on our schedules, but for the most part, those are our live times. So if you just want to tune in, you'll probably see us sitting here shooting the breeze. Amber, before we go on, we need to thank our sponsor, our first sponsor, and that is Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to publish a high-quality website or blog. I'm a Squarespace user, as are many of my friends and colleagues, and I can't speak of them highly enough because they make putting together a website easy for people who don't really know what they're doing. I'm just going to be honest with you here. If you do know what you're doing, you'll enjoy the, the, the UI, the back end, Squarespace's it's serious stuff. It's for people who are really talented, who want to get put together a high quality website. And you can do that if you know what you're doing. Absolutely. But if you don't know what you're doing, you will not be left behind uh, either. I'm looking at the examples page. If you just go to squarespace.com up at the top, they have an examples tab that you can click on and just get a sense for what people are doing. And they're in a variety of, of, of areas too. I mean, I'm just looking at the media and publishing. Um, category here inside twit.tv that's a squarespace blog i don't know if you guys knew that did you know it yeah we're on there um so yeah you get a good idea of what squarespace is all about what's nice about them is that uh they have great customer service they make it easy for novices to put together something i mean you could you could you could uh sign up and put together a very simple squarespace blog in minutes. I mean, you could literally have a blog and it wouldn't even take you uh, faster than you can make a sandwich. But if you want to get more complicated, you can customize to your heart's content. Absolutely. I have a um, custom design blog myself, so it doesn't look like any other blogs. And I like that. You know, it's not like a uh, Squarespace blog. They all look the same. Not at all. Um, if you uh, if you want to take a tour, if you're kind of like, well, I need to know a little bit more about it. Uh, they have a really good uh, sort of walkthrough that gives you an idea of all the different stuff that Squarespace will help you out with. Designing, managing, 
managing your stats, knowing who's coming, who's referring you. They have their support. They have a developer uh, department too if you want to get a little bit more under the hood. They have a great iPhone, iPad app. I, 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 I love their mobile interface. I use the iPad app almost exclusively just to kind of like uh, manage comments and, and make sure that I know who's hitting my site. And in, very importantly, blog importer, which is also an exporter too. So if you've already got a blog, be it on WordPress or, or TypePad or something like that, you can import all of your content and you don't have to start over. And I think that's daunting for a lot of people. If you feel like you've been on Blogger for a long time, you you don't want to start over unless you do, unless you're, you know, changed your name or something. Uh, but a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, I've, I've already built up something in one place. Uh, Squarespace makes it really easy to import everything you've got and you're, you're just now on, 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 uh, on their interface and you can export as well so they're not going to hold any of your data hostage they're just cool like that uh, a lot of social widgets too if you if you if you're not a regular blogger this is my problem I, I don't blog that often but I am on various social networks all day long you can add a bunch of widgets to your site so that even if you're not blogging you don't have to feel guilty like oh, I'm neglecting my blog because all a lot of other stuff on your page is updating constantly through those social widgets I so, love all the widgets I always go to your site and I you know you can always see your most re recent tweet so yeah you a lot of the content there fresh yeah exactly and I think if I didn't have that I'd feel like ah, oh, you know this is I, I, letting people down or, or I seem lazy or that sort of thing. It's like, I really am online all the time. Blogging just happens to be one of the things I feel I have less time for than maybe I did a few years ago. So we also have a special deal for anybody who is watching the social hour or listening later or uh, watching on YouTube or anything like that. If you go to the sign up tab, all right, it's so upper right hand area. You go ahead and you sign up for an account. All right, you pick your site, password, email address, good to go. Create your website. And once you do that, it will ask if you have a special code. We have a code for you and it's social hour seven. That's all one word, S-O-C-I-A-L-H-O-U-R, the number seven. And that will give you 10% off of your website for the first six months. And by the way, that's after trying it out for 14 days. So you just, tr you, you, you've got a free 14 days to just play around. After 14 days you go, man, I really like this. Uh, the pricing, very, very reasonable options. But for six months, you get 10% off of each month. Really good deal for our social hour listeners and viewers. And we thank Squarespace. Again, that's squarespace.com. And the offer code is social, social hour seven. seven. That's right. That's right. Oh, Squarespace, we love you. All right, Amber, what is next on our topic list today? All right, so uh, in our spotlight segment, we have a uh, link to a service that Leo sent out to both both of us, I believe, uh, on the weekend. Oh, and that's right. uh, yeah, the name of the site is Fancy Hands, a uh, great name. So just at fancyhands.com, and their tagline is Personal Assistance for Everyone. So the idea behind it is that if you need a little help at work, or maybe you're a freelancer, you run your own business, and you have a bunch of kind of mundane tasks that you don't want to do yourself, yet you're not able to afford to hire a, a personal assistant on a part-time basis, you can actually use this service. You can use one of their plans um, and you can get people uh, just by submitting any of your needs through uh, the service itself. You can ask people to do uh, tasks for you. Um, so for instance, I think for about uh, um, $35 a month, there are, you could get 15 things done for you on the site. Now you're probably wondering, well, what kind of things can you actually get people to do? Well, let's say you wanted uh, dinner reservations or you wanted to know um, if there was a plane ticket available on a certain route that you were looking for. People on the other end of Fancy Hands, I don't know who these people are, but uh, obviously they work for the company, would go in and do these tasks for you and uh, and help you a little bit uh, with some of the extra load that you have in your work day. At Fancy Hands, it's kind of cool because my my original thought was, well, wait, like what kind of thing would I outsource to somebody that I don't even know? And they, they actually have a lot of um, some of the stuff that you touched on, Amber, examples like, for example, at home, uh, let's say you, 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 know, you need a new housekeeper. Uh, you've got a messy house and you just don't have time and, and you don't really have time to research uh, a good housekeeper. You don't have any friends that are, that are, that are going to recommend anybody. Or for a wedding. Oh, okay. So wedding is a good example of events where it's like event planners really come in handy. I mean, that's why 
uh, they do so well. Uh, maybe uh, four bands, call these four bands and inform them we won't be needing their services. So that's something that it's like, it's that courtesy call for the bands that you ended up not going with. But you don't really have time and it's not really important, but you wouldn't mind paying somebody a little bit of money to just do that for you. Amber, my issue is Fancy Hands sounds like a great, great service. I love the idea. I'm, they're, they're not the first people to... to uh, to do something like this, but it, I mean, this is the first kind of service of their kind that seems to have put a nice wrapper around the idea of, of, of having other people do kind of just like crappy errands for you type of a thing. But if you go to the plans and pricing area, um, they have pretty, I, I think they're pretty reasonable plans. So you can go $35 a month for 15 tasks. And they definitely say it's like, it's per task. It's not by the hour. It's not how many emails it takes to go back and forth to explain what you need them to do. It's 15 tasks. Although I imagine that that might be a little bit complicated depending on how well you are at explaining what you want. <laughs> and then if you go up to yearly or, or quarterly models, you save a little bit of money. Unlimited tasks, I mean, if you really liked the service, is only 55 bucks. So it's like, if you, 15 tasks per month is fine. But if, I mean, if you know you need like 60, then it seems reasonable. But they don't give you any sort of... Um, like a preview mode where I can at least have somebody do a couple of easy tasks for me to know that to test it out. Yeah, and, and I, I guess it's it's probably it would be really hard for them to give out anything for free because this is actual humans' time. I mean, it, yeah, it takes some time. Yeah. Well, I'm going to uh, help you out a little bit here because right. I wrote them this morning um, for a couple of reasons. I wanted to see if maybe I could get in touch with them just to see if potentially they would come on the show and talk a little bit more about the service, uh, but also to see if I could just get an account to kind of play around with it, just a, a press account to uh, give it a whirl because I did mm -hmm. want to try it. It sounds like an interesting idea. You know, Leo's always great when he sees something. Usually uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. So uh, hopefully I'll hear back from them in the next day or two and uh, I'll be able to give an update on the show and let you know if it worked. I'll that's take great. Really hard tasks. <laughs> yeah, please do. Yeah, because that, that's another thing is, is um, if I was to say, hey, can you recommend a good dog walker? I'm sure that Fancy Hands could recommend a good dog walker. But, you know, some of that stuff is just very personal. You know, I might of get course. like a weird vibe from somebody and it's like, I don't want them giving them a key in my house. Even though the person at Fancy Hands might be like, well, I don't know, what's the problem, Sarah? I mean, people can just be so particular about that sort of thing. So I guess you have to be somebody who is comfortable relinquishing a little control in order to get something done uh, more hassle-free. But I guess that's the whole point, is that you want it to be taken off of your hands. Yeah, so. and maybe it would be good, though, for research or something like that. You know, something where it, it didn't, you know, I would care who was walking my dog, like you mentioned. It's not like I'm going to go there and ask them to find a nanny for me or something along right. those lines. I'm not sure if I trust it at that level just yet. But let's say I was doing research uh, for a social media presentation, and I wanted to know if there was a great example of uh, a dentist out there who was using social media. Well, maybe I could throw that task at them, and they would come back with some great ideas. So I may try it for some stuff like that, and I'll be able to uh, figure out uh, if it's beneficial because it is really reasonable as far as the cost and uh, who knows how effective they are, but um, there are some pretty good things that have been said about it both on Twitter and in some mainstream media outlets as well. Very true. They've gotten a lot of good press. I guess it's worth mentioning that you need a Google account in order to use Fancy Hands if you're very excited. I just clicked on $55 a month. I went, okay, well, let's just see how far I can get without having to enter my credit card information. Um, and it does uh, require you to have a Google account. So. Many people do. Not everybody does. So that's something to consider if you want to get going with fancy hands as well. All right, Amber, I'm very excited about our social tips today because they all have to do with Google+. Yes. And now I, I almost feel like Google+, Plus is like people either get really excited about it or they're like, oh, my God, shut up about Google+. Plus. We're so tired of it because it's still not completely open for everybody. A lot of people have been invited since we talked about it last week, but it's not... It's still something that some people are, are not able to experience, so I, I think that that contributes to a lot of uh, Google Plus discussion fatigue. Um, and even fatigue among people who are using it who kind of go, yeah, all right, I got it, it's fun, but it's just another social network for me to manage. And I've definitely been hearing that a little bit in sort of the tech kid circle, but I s also sort of think that the tech kid, I call them tech kids, I mean, even though we are, I, I consider myself one of them. It's not a bad word, but it's like services are really fun. 
um, when you feel like you're a lucky few who get to use it and point out bugs and, and you know, it's kind of exciting. And then as, as more people start using a service, things change. Uh, you start seeing more content that might not appeal to you or apply to you. And, and there's kind of that, that, those floodgates. I mean, we, we've all seen it on Twitter and Facebook and that sort of thing. So we're definitely in that kind of learning period of how Google Plus will Will, will work for us going forward. But one of the things that Google Plus doesn't have um, are some things that some extensions can help give you. And yes. I love these so far. Amber, I don't know if you're a big uh, extensions person, but I always have been, even since I kind of would just like, just tinker around with Windows, you know, and, and download these like stupid executable files just to make my life a little bit easier because it's something that, that uh, you know, the OS didn't have natively. But uh, Google Plus is, yeah. is, has all, all sorts of stuff like this, where, where it's, things like this are sort of rising up because people are frustrated right now with the limitation. Um, and the first one is an extension. This is actually, a, I think it's a Chrome, IE, and a Firefox extension, so it covers a lot of us anyway. That is the Fire, not Firefox, Facebook tab. So when you're at your Google Plus home screen and you want to check out uh, what's going on on Facebook, oh gosh, I'm, I'm logged in as the social hour, not as Sarah Lane, uh, which is why it's, it's acting as if I don't have an account. But the idea is that you get to see your Facebook feed from within Google Plus. Amber, is this something that appeals to you? Yeah, I mean, I think I saw this uh, posted. I think maybe I saw Veronica Belmont post it a couple of days ago, and it looked pretty interesting. So, yeah, I would love it. I'm all for consolidation. So any way I can see more social streams within one place, the better it is for me so I can kind of manage them. Because right now, I don't know about you, Sarah, but as far as usage, I'm kind of jump jumping a little bit from Google+, Plus and then I'll forget about Facebook for a day or two, and, and I don't mm -hmm. want to neglect community there either. So uh, it sounds like a really uh, neat extension to be able to use. Absolutely. What's also, an, um, and that one is called, what is that one called? That one is called Google Plus Facebook. So it's, so if it's something that you're searching for, um, this is actually their website. Uh, it was really easy to install. Yeah, again, it's IE, Firefox, and Chrome. So sorry, Safari users, but um, a lot of people have installed this already. It is a somewhat limiting. For example, when you look at your news stream, let's say that Amber updated on Facebook, hey, uh, I'm having a great show with Sarah. And then she kind of goes on, it would say, view entire post on Facebook. So it's still going to jump you back over if you wanted to expand the update or read any of the comments that people um, mm -hmm. had, had added to the update. So it's a good little glimpse into just kind of what's been going on on Facebook if you just want a quick look, maybe to decide if it's worth your time to go spend 10 minutes on Facebook or not. But it is somewhat limiting. It's a cool idea, but it's limiting. All right, well... Here is the next add-on that will make your life better. And I agree with Le Leo is like, nah, I don't want a bunch of add-ons. It's just going to clutter things up. It's going to make things act funny. I want the, the native Google Plus experience. I agree with him, except that they're missing some very key features. And one of them is replies, replies to particular comments or replies to author, especially when you get a post that's really popular that a lot of people have responded to. It's almost unmanageable. If you want to reply to someone's question in a comment 10 comments down and there are 50 more comments afterwards then you have to remember their name and then go to the bottom yep. and you know how that goes i mean it's very frustrating so this extension it's called it doesn't have a very okay it's called replies and more for google plus so i have this installed and uh, it does more than just reply functionality but this is the reply functionality is what i like the best okay so for example M.G. Siegler, that was just, I'm, he's just at the top of my stream, this is not set up, um, is tar, he wrote a post about how he hates email. So right here, normally, when you look in Google+, Plus, it would be the plus one button, you can comment, you can share. Well now, since I have this extension installed, and this is just a Chrome extension, I have a reply to author. So even though a bunch of people have already replied, I don't have to scroll down to the bottom. Let's say if I you know, had my comments expanded, that's a long way down and just kind of annoying. I can go ahead and reply to the author directly or let's say I want to reply to um, uh, Vondre here. Now if I, if I uh, hover over this particular comment, I can go ahead and reply to him and it, it, it takes me right down to the bottom where I can post a comment. So that to me is like 
the most helpful thing I've seen so far because that was it, it's an issue with any time you have popular conversations you have to be able to reply to people threaded comments are at least for me they're important Amber is this something that you would use yeah no that's awesome I that's one of the criticisms I've had about Google Plus is just uh, the ability to be able to manage the comments on a particular post and it's just kind of cumbersome to be able to reply to individuals and um, like you said to reply to the author as well and I want to be able to do it because I think it helps to kind of build community and build your relationships there um, but it has been uh, a, a little bit uh, um, mundane as far as going through the process of responding on an individual basis at the bottom of the post without something like that so that's very cool Sarah I'm sure Lots of people who are using Google Plus will love it. Yeah, me too. So there are a couple of other uh, enhancements, or at least one that, that you floated my way. I'm not a WordPress user, but WordPress people can, can do a little fun stuff with Google Plus too. Yeah, so this was kind of interesting. Um, I uh, got this idea from Casey McKinnon. She had posted on Google+. Plus. She's uh, uh, notorious for some of the podcasts she's done for a while. She's uh, very into sci-fi. and uh, Yeah, Galacticast. I used to love yeah. that show. I wish they'd bring it back. She's fantastic. So um, she had posted a, a few days ago that she added a, a Google Plus widget to her website, or at least a link, I think, to her website. And I was talking to uh, the developer who manages uh, my site and just asked him if he could go poke around and see if he could find a good widget, uh, which he did pretty quickly. So on ambermac.com, I now have the Google Plus widget uh, built in on the site. So essentially, uh, it's just a, a real easy plugin that he put there that allows people to uh, add you to their circles um, directly from uh, your home page and tells people how many people um, are following you as well. And uh, this is available from plusdevs.com. Um, and I know a lot of people were interested in that uh, and checking it out and uh, adding it to their own page. So it's on the um, right-hand side of Amber. Oh, yeah, there you are. Mm -hmm. So this is, oh, this is so cool. Okay, so this is Amber's website, which is just, I mean, you rock. You've got so much cool stuff going on. Your website is so dynamic. I really, you put me to shame. So you've got your Twitter widget. You've got links to a lot of the stuff that you're involved in and, and what you do regularly. Um, recent posts. Uh, last week's The Social Hour, and then you've got your nice Google Plus widget too. So if you weren't already added to my circles, for example, you are, but if you weren't and I clicked Add to Circles, yep. it would send me right over to your profile, and then I would have the opportunity to, and there's a problem completing my action because it's still trying to figure out what account I'm, I'm using, but everyone knows that at, from the profile up at the top, I would have the option to add you to my circles. That's really awesome. Yeah, so that's a really great tip. And the other, uh, not so much a tip, but uh, a few people have asked me on Twitter and on Google Plus uh, when brands and companies will be able to use Google Plus, uh, kind of like Facebook pages as a platform to be able to promote what you do. And I, I didn't really have a firm answer for people. I know there are some brands that are experimenting right now and they are creating uh, Google Plus profiles for their companies to promote their brand. However, um, Google has just announced that uh, they want people to kind of hold on before they, before companies get in there and start using the platform because they are making some special arrangement to allow companies and brands to take full advantage of Google+. Plus. Uh, so I'm imagining they're rolling out something kind of like Facebook pages uh, that will be specific for not individuals but for organizations. So um, before you jump on Google+, Plus with your company's name, you might want to wait a couple days because it looks like the announcement is coming soon and uh, uh, I think that's exciting I mean it's a perfect opportunity for brands to be able to uh, build communities on another platform I agree I really like Facebook pages I know some people have more success with them than others um, I find that my community that 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 has has liked my Facebook page and engages on it or you know it's a good group of folks and and it seems like a better place to post a lot of the stuff I'm doing career wise mm -hmm. than you know the Facebook profile and Google Plus has the opportunity to do something very similar and I think that also helps separate brands from people um, and I know it's kind of a gray area because people you and I might be considered brands, even though I don't really like to call myself that. It's like there is branding that individuals do, but that there is a difference between just being social and interacting and kind of having an agenda or something to share with people. And if Google Plus can keep those separate enough so that people don't feel like, oh, you know, I'm overwhelmed by Coca-Cola and they're, they're pretending to, to be social, but it's really just they're trying to sell me something. I think that Facebook has done that pretty well, where it's it's pretty yeah. obvious the difference between the two, and that. Just 
like even just little simple things, Sarah, like on a, a Facebook page, as you know, you don't have to go in and accept accept everybody who wants to be your friend, right? So it just yeah. happens automatically. Anyone can like your page. So that's great for companies because why do you, would you want that extra step of having to manage that, you know? So um, I think there's just different functionality that's needed for companies, like you said, versus individuals. I should mention too, Sarah, this is one other tip that I didn't have on the rundown, but um, is it gplus.to where you can get your own um, branded URL for your Google Plus page? Have you heard of that? Yeah, and you know what? There are two of them. Okay. There is gplus.to, and then there's, you guys, I know chat room. We talked about this on TNT last week. You have to help me out because there is a, there's another, um, there's another one that somebody who actually actually watches uh, Twit had had secured slash Sarah for me. Oh, Plusly, yeah, thanks. So if you go to plus ly, okay, um, then yeah, so you get a page like this. This is the unofficial. Obviously, there's a donate button, so you get the idea. I also don't think Google Plus would probably have Facebook like buttons <laughs> up at the top, but I don't know. I mean, so this is not this is not like a, a Google product. This is just something that's an easy shortener. So if you wanted to um, be able to, I don't know, just get a shortener for your name, that would be the way to go. And then the Google version of it was what was it again? Um, I've just been using gplus.to. G, yeah, gplus.to. And I think, well, that's not that that's not official either. So these that's are both unofficial, official. but they do the same. It's the same idea, right? And what you need is your Google ID in order to create one. And if for any reason you're not sure what that is, if you just go to your profile here. Oh, I wonder if it's going to give me grief because it's still like, who are you? Okay, no, here's, if you go up to the URL, here, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll zoom in a little bit. There's a number that everyone has. It's a unique number, kind of Facebook-ish type of a thing that's in the URL when you're adding your own profile of, of, of Google+. That number is the number that uh, you want to enter into either g plus dot two or, or plus dot lee um, in order to to grab your shortener. It's, it, the, I guess the only thing that's, that could be a little bit weird about this, Amber, is let's say that you and I were in a big fight and I wanted slash Amber Mac to go to my Google profile. I could do yeah. that if I was just first, but I guess that's not really too different than creating whatever username you want to be on a, on a certain site if you beat somebody. As long as you're not impersonating them, you're not really doing anything wrong. But I could see some people, some feathers getting a little ruffled over this. Mm -hmm. Well, I can only imagine it's just a matter of time before Google officially rolls out something where you can claim your own URL. So hopefully that will happen. But it's sort of a um, an interim solution right now if you want something that isn't as long-winded as the current URL, which has all those numbers in it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. All right, before we get to our Radder Fad segment, we have a couple of emails. Um, thanks for everybody's uh, uh, emails. We didn't get any voicemails this week, and I don't know why, because I know that Twit listeners and viewers are not shy about uh, voicemails because we have Google Voice accounts set up for other shows. So if Amber and I seem intimidating, don't let don't let that stop you from sending us don't a voice be shy. Back. exactly the number is 2626 social so just 2626 and then s o c i a l whatever numbers correspond to that one day we'll we'll have that uh, um, committed to memory it just isn't today but for the most part so we'll stick with emails today uh, i'll read the first email and then you can read the second email amber the first That's one good. from howard says can you give some advice on why somebody who's on Facebook and Flickr and Twitter would want to add another social network. Again, this is kind of that Google Plus conversation. Should I wait until there's a critical mass of my friends who use it before I do? After all, there are just only so many hours in the day I can devote to this. Thank you. Amber, we, we talk about this a lot, um, wh whether people need all of the options. I mean, no one really needs all of the options that they have. It's all about how it works for you, but what advice would you have to, to Howard and others who are just wondering if they, if they need to get on the bandwagon every time we get excited about something new? 
Well, I, I think it's funny because I get this question a lot, especially when I speak at events, people saying, I don't have time to manage all of these networks. I don't know about you, Sarah, but I don't think it really takes that much time. Like, I don't sit for hours on all of these networks and, and, you know, just wait for someone to tweet me something. So I think it really becomes more about the tools you use to manage them. I don't think it's a, a, a cumbersome process if you are managing three or four. And another thing I would say, just to kind of answer this question in terms of the reason why you would want to join another social network is uh, simply that they have, it has different functionality. I mean, Twitter is, is much different than Facebook, and, and Facebook is different than Google+, Plus, although there are similarities. So I would say, you know, try it out. If you don't have time for all of them, then maybe you decide to abandon one and, and focus on just a couple of them. But, um, you know, it's fun, and who knows, you may meet new circles of friends. I find on different social networks, I have different groups of friends, and, and that's one of the reasons I kind of like them. Yeah, yeah, they're, 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 they're not all the same. You definitely get a different group of people. I've been really Im impressed with my Google Plus network so far. It just seems like a lot of people who are enthusiastic. And maybe that's something that, that makes at least trying a new service out worth it. If you have enough friends who are also enthusiastic about trying something new, it can be really fun. Even if that fun dies down after a while because it just becomes like, oh, another social network to check. The, the momentum of new services are... I don't know. I mean, for many of us, it really is. It's fun. It's like it's not a chore at all. It's a good time. But you yeah. probably it, it, you have to figure out where your time is 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 best spent. And you're right. It's like people hang out on Facebook all day. Right. But you don't have to. It can be a quick, easy check in, answer some people, maybe say I'm going to come to a couple birthday parties. And it, it is what you make of it. Exactly. So we have another question, and this email is from Aaron. And uh, Aaron watched our latest show, which is episode 15, and decided to try out uh, that uh, router fed uh, link that we mentioned called replicants.org. And the idea behind this is that it's uh, essentially a bot to be able to update uh, sites like your Twitter account automatically. So you don't have to spend all that time uh, doing it on your own. So maybe Howard, our uh, previous uh, person who asked a question, would like this. <laughs> and uh, yeah. kind of like a virtual uh, uh, interaction interactive intelligence and um, so Aaron created a his own Twitter account uh, just to use replicants with um, and I think it's VII 37 is the uh, Twitter account and as far as I understand that the, the account is kind of automated now um, I just want to say before uh, we talk any further about this I don't necessarily recommend that you use this service to, uh, and let everything be automated on your social networks uh, but it's kind of interesting to play around with it and it looks like Aaron's been having some fun with it yeah he seems pretty enthusiastic about it, and it's interesting. Yeah, it's 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 at v i i three seven, but one one three seven. So it's kind of like a George Lucas reference there. This looks like a very normal account. I mean, it's following me. It's following you. A few other people. We got Prager and Leo in there. And you look at the there's there's some retweets. There seem to be some some at replies. This doesn't seem like a bot at all. The video link. I mean, this seems pretty normal. Now, I don't know if this is worth it. I, I, I mean, I, I guess if you were just sort of like, I want to have a presence on Twitter, but I don't want to take the time to read all of these articles. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if this is a good thing or if it's uh, contributing to kind of Twitter clutter and noise, but it seems very legitimate. We did have someone else wrote us, um, actually on Twitter, uh, he or she had... Um, had set up a, a bot, a replicants bot, just like just like this one, and it tweeted something at me, and then it retweeted itself, tweeting the same thing at me, and I kind of went, yeah, this experiment's not working out very well, and he said, you're right, I'm out of here. So he, he abandoned the project, he didn't have as good of luck, so I'm not sure if it's who you follow, luck of the draw, you, you get a bad bot. No. But don't don't abandon your uh, Twitter account right now and uh, let the bot take over. No, no, please don't, Aaron. I'm glad we're we're glad that you're having good success with it. Um, but yeah, it's still it still remains to be seen if 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 bots need to be handling our Twitter accounts. I mean, what's the fun of that anyway? Unless exactly. for some reason your bot is smarter than you and you actually want to follow your bot and read the articles that they that pretend that you're sending. That would have to be a pretty special bot, Sarah. Yeah, special Pretty bot. special. Um, now you can send us all your feedback. Sarah mentioned we have a couple of emails. We didn't get any voicemails, but we love voicemails. If you do want to send us an email, just write us at the social hour at twit.tv. And uh, of course, Sarah mentioned uh, you can leave a voicemail at 2626-SOCIAL um, or record a video and uh, upload it for us and, and keep it short and sweet. 
Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to see your faces and hear your voices. Emails are great too. So you have all sorts of options. If you want to get a hold of us, we love to get your thoughts and your feedback and to feature you whenever possible. Before Amber is extremely, extremely rad or fad, not saying yet. Uh, we want to thank Netflix really quick, or maybe not so quick. Maybe I'll spend 10 minutes talking about it. No, I'm just kidding. Netflix for sponsoring the second half of our show. For anybody who uses Netflix, you know how awesome it is. It is the, the, the way to watch instant streaming movies or TV shows. It's your TV, your Roku box, Apple TV, mobile device, Wii, Xbox 360. I mean, there are so many ways that you can watch Netflix content. It is awesome. Then again, they also have DVDs. You just want to sign up for the, the you know, Netflix was known for that originally before they even had instant streaming movies. They've still got that. Two different plans. You choose the one that, that makes the most sense to you. But I love the instant streaming because it, you know, I can watch Knockaround Guys starring Vin Diesel. And I don't have to think about whether or not that's a good idea. Because I just say, yeah, let's stream it right now, quick, before I change my mind. If you want to go to their website too, what you do is you, you, you have a queue that you can manage online or you can just choose anything from their instant queue. But if you, they give you a, a decent amount of information about the movies or the TV shows that you might um, be deciding to watch. You know, there's a member average of ratings. That can be really helpful. If, you, if you're not familiar with a movie, um, that's why it's always, it's always good when you can rate stuff. Try to rate stuff as much as possible because you, you just contribute to the wisdom of the crowd. If you want to sign up for Netflix, you're not convinced, not a problem. That's okay. We know that sometimes new services can be sort of like, I don't know if this is for me. Start a one month free trial and you can watch as many movies, any content, TV shows, whole series. What about Buffy? I always use Buffy because they had like, it's like 30 seasons or something of Buffy. So it would take a long time to get through all of them. Just sign up. It's very easy. Email. Choose a password, press continue. You get a whole month free to check out Netflix, instant stream, get DVDs sent to your house, whatever you want to do. It's a good time. Free movies, free content. What is not to like? Netflix.com slash twit is the URL. Um, Netflix.com, I mean, you can, you can sign up for a free trial either way, but if you go Netflix.com slash twit, then we get credit for sending you there. And... Uh, then Netflix says, yay, Twit's awesome. We want to work with them more in the future. So it works out well for everybody. Again, Netflix.com slash Twit. We thank them so much for sponsoring this episode of The Social Hour. Now, Amber, what is rad and what is fad? Shush. <laughs> shush. Why are you telling yes. me to shush? What I have know. I done wrong? This is a, a quick little service that I stumbled across uh, earlier today. Uh, it's kind of neat. Uh, it uh, integrates with your Twitter account. And the concept behind the service is that it allows you to hear uh, more from people who you don't typically hear from because they don't tweet a lot on Twitter. So it essentially drowns out the noise of the people who tweet a lot. And the way that it does that is by size. So once you uh, sync it up with your uh, Twitter account, you can see uh, the stream of people that you're following. And then you'll if it, the print is really tiny, those are people who tweet all the time. So uh, maybe their tweets aren't as important. Um, if the uh, tweeter message is really big, that's from someone who doesn't necessarily tweet a lot and doesn't normally get he heard uh, by the Twitter community. So um, it's basically scaling back those people with frequent updates. Uh, it's kind of interesting. You know, I found um, a link here that uh, I probably wouldn't have seen uh, in my own Twitter feed. And uh, this was from uh, uh, Hootsuite. And Hootsuite is an application that I use to manage all of my social accounts and uh, it looks like uh, people are trying to get uh, uh, groups of people to come together and request that Hootsuite starts to integrate with Google Plus so you can post to Google Plus, Facebook and Twitter and other accounts at the same time and you can place your request for Hootsuite to do this at a certain link so um, I'm going to definitely uh, put my request in and uh, like I said I probably wouldn't have found this unless I was using Shush so I don't know if I'm going to use it all the time Sarah but um, I think it's an interesting concept. It is an interesting concept. I'm glad that you explained to me that smaller means louder because it, it it's almost counterintuitive, right? Yes. My, my friend I, Cap here, who he works at, well, he, he worked at Formspring. He's actually moving over to Amazon. But I see that his tweet is a little bit bigger than Laughing Squids. And I might think, oh, so that means he's louder because it's like he's yelling. It's, it's, it's like the inverse. So that he rises up to the top a little bit more rather than getting lost in all of my uh, more prolific friends who just can't stay off 
uh, the update button. That's really cool. So Serafina, she works at Revision 3. She doesn't tweet that often, apparently. What's also neat is, so I went ahead and I signed up with Shush. It was very easy. Um, you just you authenticate through Twitter. My Shush level is 4. Okay. And what you notice is when you, when you uh, hover over a variety of people's tweets, they also have numbers. Okay. So everywhere Trip is an 11. Matthew Ingram, our friend Matthew Ingram, is also an 11. There's a 6. Molly Wood over at CNET is a 5. Well, what do all those mean? If I go down to the very bottom and you click on About, well, you just hover on About, you don't even have to click, it gives you a sense of what the number system is. So 1 is you're a very infrequent tweeter. 11 is you're the most frequent type of tweeter. So some of those accounts, Matthew Ingram, you're tweeting a lot, man, although he always has good things to say, so I have no problem with that. So I agree. I, so I'm a 4, so I'm a little less than half, so that makes me feel like I'm not too noisy, hopefully I'm not too annoying. Um, I Whoa, okay, so Slick Machines never tweets, apparently. That's my friend Sasha. Wow. That's the I largest think that's a tweet nine. I've seen. You think you're a nine? Yeah. I, think I wonder that's a if replies are added because I reply to a lot of people. If you go to my profile and look at my stream, it's almost all replies. But that doesn't really contribute to overall noise because you would have to be following both people to see that. So if that stripped out, then I think this is actually pretty helpful. Yeah. I think it's neat. I, I like it. I, I think we can put it in the rad category. I do too. Hmm. We haven't had, I don't think we've had a rad in a few weeks. Shush, that's S-H-U-U -U dot S-H. Um, not that intuitive for our audio listeners, but S-H-U-U -U dot S-H. Very easy. I mean, kind of a novelty, I guess. I'm not yeah, sure that this is the way I'm going to read Twitter from now on. It would be neat if it was integrated though, Sarah. You know, like yeah. I, I agree, the problem is going out to a, a service like this, but if I knew that I was using, um, you know, uh, TweetDeck or Hootsuite or something like that, and I could kind of integrate this in as like another panel, that would be kind of interesting um, just to see the stuff you don't see a lot of, right? Yeah, I, 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 like, I like the idea. Wouldn't it be nice if Twitter had, I, I mean, I, I know Twitter doesn't like to give a bunch of people a bunch of different user experiences, and that's why they're, sometimes not playing so nice with third-party apps these days, but if I had the option to just have different views, I mean, almost like different Twitter skins based on the, on the web experience, and this was one of my options, I think I'd probably look at it semi-regularly, yeah. you know, even just for kicks. Yeah, yeah, just for fun, I agree. So uh, we found something that was kind of rad, Sarah, which is, like you mentioned, uh, not a common occurrence on the show because we find lots of... <laughs> Sarah is doing a dance. For I am. Of... It's the rad dance. Well, yeah. there's everything's a fad. So when something's actually cool and we're like, yeah, this is pretty neat. Can't really find anything wrong with it. It makes me happy. <laughs> yes, it is a good thing. So uh, uh, kind of fun. So you can shush all your friends. Wonderful. In a good way. Good. Shush. That's S-H-U-U dot S-H. And we have called it rad. Not fad. Rad. But if you think it's fad, let us know, too, because we will welcome uh, the devil's advocate part of the conversation uh, of if, you, if, you, if you have a good one. All right, Amber, I think we've gotten to the end of our social hour. It was a good hour. It was a lot of content, Sarah, that we packed in there. We were talking pretty quickly, so you might want to re-listen to the show yes. um, a second time. <laughs> True. And again, if you're confused about any of the links that we talked about, we try to add all of that information into our show notes at twit.tv slash TSH. That's also where you can see all of our show archives, um, subscribe to the audio stream, video stream, whatever you want to do. Um, makes it really easy for you to uh, engage with the show. And again, next week... We will have Pistachio herself of 140.com as a guest on the show. They have some stuff in the works, too, which I think she's going to be telling us more about um, some new projects that they're working on over there. So I'm very excited because they yes. are. Um, if anyone knows about social networking and especially really cool services that work with Twitter, um, I'm sure that uh, 140 knew about Shush before we did. So. Probably, so to to uh, we'll get some tips, and you're right that I think she held off on joining the show because she has something to uh, uh, reveal or share with uh, the audience here. So don't forget to listen up uh, next week, especially if you're trying to manage your own Twitter life and account and, and build some type of, type of brand for yourself or your company. It should be some really helpful tips. Absolutely. So we'll look forward to that show. It'll be next time, same time, next week, same time, same place. But for now, Amber, go back and enjoy your summer vacation on Prince Edward Island. Sarah. And we'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks, Sarah.